My name is Narayan Pai. I am from Mechanical Department. Uh, I, I want to ask is, is IAM experience is really required to do the work what you have done in your field? Or uh, I mean, or is it fine like if you have started from your after IIT also? <laughs> would, would look, that, wouldn't that be? Yeah. No, look, as I said that I didn't plan these things. You know, it wasn't a rational decision. I mean, many things have been irrational in what I have done. People ask me that I started in Bengal at that time when I had to learn that language. Uh, I could have started in a more familiar area. All these ifs and buts are there. But in hindsight, I mean, I, I believe that, you know, I mean, there is a right time for, right time when things happened. There is a certain, you know, uh, I believe, you know, I mean, a follower of Swami Vivekananda. I believe that certain forces also guide you. So, uh, there is a right time, I mean, for when things happen. Uh, I, I didn't plan at that time, I was possibly not ready for it, that's why such thoughts never came into my mind when I was out of my IIT. Maybe I would have miserably failed had I attempted any such thing at that point of time. So, things happen, I mean, in their own way. Uh, so, about this, but I think, I mean, your question is also about this thing, whether my degree or skills that acquired, whether they really helped. Now, now it's difficult to say, uh, I mean, I can't quantify the manner in which they helped. Any kind of intellectual equipment also helps us. But it's not that I gained intellectual equipment at I am because I, I hardly attended classes, etc. In fact, I, whatever intellectual growth I, I may have had has happened after that because of I reading on my own, I mean, about things or the own, whatever scholarly pursuits I have tried to do in my own way after, during all these years. So, education doesn't end, you know. So, uh, but definitely these, these two, IIT and I am being well-known, you know, brands in our country. Uh, it's, I think this, they helped, this particular association with these two brands, being, a, being an alumnus of these two institutions this definitely helped me and the network who you have that thing you know that uh, coming from particularly from IIM because it had a it had small close-knit networks unlike the IITs uh, the IIM networks in my initial years in my initial years were very helpful but had I not been in IIM even then maybe I would have like in some way so many people do I mean, even much greater things, they, they, they are not IIT or IIM alumni, so it doesn't matter. But whatever, yeah, I mean, these skills uh, in some way are helpful, network is helpful. Uh, apart from IIT, I mean, only IIM also is what I'm saying. Like if I'm I Yeah, yeah, th th that also, look, this I because of IIM I came to Calcutta. Had I not come joined IIM, maybe this wouldn't have started because I started this in Calcutta, so I, in some way, you know, that resonance in my mind or certain inspiration or meeting some people, all that happened there, it was meant to be there, uh, possibly. I mean, in hindsight, this is what I can do because there is no rational explanation for this. Uh, so, I mean, I can't say that. I mean, as I said that, even without it, maybe like it would have got secret, but it's a hypothetical thing, so I can't really say. Yeah, I congratulate for your yeah. good work. Thank you. Yeah. And... Uh, I want to know that uh, how such an organization sustains. Right. Like uh, you told us how it was built upon. Right. But, uh, how do you continue to sustain it for such long time? Correct. And uh, if somebody is looking into such a venture, so is it uh, dependent on, uh, is, is it a self-dependent thing or it uh, right. entirely depends on help from others? Right. I'll address all these you know, points that you had. One thing is this, that my basic feeling about say sustainability, about success, all these things stems from or springs from this particular line which Swami Vivekan says. It's one of my favorite lines. It's, it goes like this, manifest your divinity and everything will be harmoniously arranged around you. So it's just that if you, as I said, I always thought and I took it as a spiritual law that if I try to become more and more pure, unself unselfish, which is the motto of this forum. So trying to be, I mean, selfless, uh, purposeful, devoted and trying to give this feeling to all my co-workers 
ensuring that they also manifest this to whatever extent possible then i was always confident that things will fall into place as they have so this never i never worried about these things now coming to sustainability look sustainability there is a whole lot of corporate thinking around this thing that today only i was discussing with one maharaj at one of our mission centers about this thing i think that this is there is whole lot of you know corporate talk about organizations re generating revenues social enterprises or social organ generating revenues for themselves in order to as you said become so self dependent etc but you know i mean uh, i actually like it's a complex question basically i i, I would like to break it, break this complexity before you i mean so that you can analyze it for yourself in a more clearer way one thing is that this is an age of specialization now in an age of specialization what does an age of specialization mean it means that everyone should do what one is good at this is the basic assumption and basic premise on which uh, on which an age of specialization is built so uh, that is why like if an ngo is say its domain is of say care taking of say children developing them or educating or say health care rural health care or certain livelihood then it is best it's the it's for the social you know optimal good that they should concentrate their best energies on that particular thing and should not you know uh, deviate their energies into other things say to run a side business to generate revenue for that etc similarly corporates if 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 an it solutions company is there it should best concentrate its energies on that i once met ceo of a very very big i mean one of the top 3 4 it companies in india so uh, they are like he also talked about this sustainability thing and he was of the opinion i mean similar opinion which i feel is a which is very very current in you know has a great currency in the corporate echelons it is this that uh, ngo should become you know start generating revenues in some so i said that you know i mean we should look at sustainability as a system systemic sustainability it shouldn't be that individual stand alone entities should be expected to do everything in an age of specialization as a system we need to be sustainable a corporate is very good at you know i mean its business its its it has its aim and objectives as to maximize the profits for the shareholders etc it's one of the key aims which drives a corporate it's best at doing that let them do that and as a system we should be sustainable so in, in essence i told that ceo i said that you earn money i'll spend that money because the age of specialization means this the social enterprises why make businessmen out of social enterprise you know everyone has to go by their swabhav you know I, it's not in my swabhav to run a business enterprise merely to generate revenues and it's a division of best energy say of me and people who are working with so this is this is a key thing so i have a very serious you know uh, difference in opinion about this particular thing and in fact good thing is that the whole uh, we are moving towards this only what what i thought uh, i always thought because the new companies act which has a csr provision of all companies uh, you know giving 2% of their net profits to the social sector actually is pointing and going towards that only as a systemic sustainability rather than say ngos you know uh, doing their own business to be sustainable also second thing is that then there will be huge scaling bars on social enterprises we can do that but it will since a lot of our energy will go into that it will put a huge huge scaling bar we won't be able to scale as fast as we can and desirable that social enterprise scale fast in a country like india where need in various domains is huge this is also one you know counter logic to this third is that if you are generating revenue you are then a participant in a, in the market so market doesn't uh, then you have to play by the rules of the market and market wouldn't market will not see that you are you know so you are profits or revenues go into the social cause they will judge you by that rules of the market and in markets lots of companies fail how many small companies which are which how many ventures actually begin to survive those which survive how many of them be, reach from small, small scale to middle scale how many of middle scale become large scale of 
hundreds and thousands of IT companies, there is one Infosys, one Wipro, isn't it? So, you then the market will dictate you. So, chances of you becoming a you know major player in your social domain itself will be very, very minimal. And the last thing, which, which is also very essential thing is that there is a need to give in people which will always remain. Swami Vivekan said that spirituality is, spirituality is the constitutional need of human mind. This is one line. And I feel this, you know, giving, sharing is one of the, you know, essential, uh, essential things, essential requirements, seeking this oneness through giving. So philanthropy is a, is a constitutional need. It will remain a con constitutional need. This even like I have interacted with some big, big magnitude, you know, high net worth donors. I have talked to them about this sustainability. One of them actually laughed at, you know, laughed before me and said that if all NGOs become self-sustaining, what shall people like us do? It's our need to give. Where shall we go? So there is a spiritual need. That's also spiritual need to give. That will always remain. And uh, a sec for a section of society, it will always remain. So all these things point out toward this that we should try to do our work in the you know best possible purest form of me my guiding line has been this manifest your divinity everything else will harmoniously are arranged around you so i have not tried to you know be too complex in my thought about this i have tried to maintain this simple thinking things have worked out for me <laughs> yeah uh, good evening sir uh, thank you very much for that uh, uh, inspirational thank thought. you uh, just I would like to know like what kind of support you are getting from the government either from the state level or uh, the center level at least after uh, the government uh, started right. recognizing your good work. Look my expectation from the government wasn't that it should help this work through say resources etc. Because the government resources, government help often comes with a lot of loss in aut autonomy which also I didn't want. So uh, that wasn't the thing. In fact I with government, I always expected that they will probably offer me a bigger canvas to contribute, say, say, through other inter social enterprises which the government supports, say, in West Bengal or in the country. But in that regard, I think, like, uh, I am not much satisfied. Uh, in West Bengal, there is a lot of politicization. It's a very, very highly politicized, politicized state and by politics we don't mean government or the class of politicians politics is in common people in if in villages of bengal i always use this line each voter is a politician in bengal so uh, any issue becomes a political issue so these thing government could have ensured us or insured us in fact from all these kind of political tussles turbulences small kind of niggles i would say if not big turbulences niggles which keep on coming so that hasn't happened the way it could have happened through greater support and also a bigger canvas to contribute say say all shelter homes or child children welfare institution in west bengal if they involve us to upgrade them uh, and through our intervention we can really upgrade so these kind of things but uh, no such opportunity is there so uh, but a few opportunities have come like I have been uh, on government of India's you know task force um, in Ministry of Women and Child. Similarly, I am in a national committee committee in Ministry of Finance, which gives the hundred percent tax exemption status under Section 35. Is it's a very very privileged you know uh, this thing provision. Only a very few NGOs for very specific projects get a hundred percent tax exemption. So I am on the committee which selects which NGO should be given that. It's headed by the Chief Justice of India and it's a 12 member committee. So I'm on that. So these things give, give opportunity for a macro contribution also. But yeah, I mean, in that sense, I think uh, I, I wasn't looking from a very narrow financial support from government. That I anyway, I mean, till this point, I didn't want. Maybe, I mean, I've never been dogmatic of my thinking, so I can't comment on future. But, uh, yeah, I mean, till this point, I didn't need that. But things which I uh, expected and maybe which they could have offered, like a bigger canvas, these kind of engagement or insuring us against disturbances, these, like, haven't been served, fulfilled. Good evening, sir. Yeah. This will be last but one question. Yeah. 
So you have mentioned about how uh, working with motive and working with emotion and how Parivar is different from other organizations, the anchoring part. So I would like to know, see, because you have seen so many organizations, how do they face these kind of situations without these kind of Look, policies? Or actually, I once read a line which I uh, remembered. It is that all great institutions are shadow of some great man. So basically, it that leadership is very, very important. And leadership, by, as I said, character, force, personal example, moral authority. You know, take the best surviving sustainable institution of our modern times. It is the Ramakrishna modern mission. It is the finest example of sustainability. You, you are talking of sustainability. Of succession, institutionalization of, say, succession, institutionalization of sustainability. So, how has that survived over so many generations? So many generations. It is that it had some very, very core fundamentals which drove this great institution. Those fundamentals are so strong that it has automatically been sustainable. Now, many organizations, you know, sometimes even the founder or key people who are who started that, even they are insincere. So, no hope for such organizations. But even where founders are sincere, many times they, they fail to institutionalize this thing within others. And it, needs, it calls for a sense of detachment, great detachment actually. Because they need to understand that at the end of the day, they will be leaving all this. You know, they have to leave this world and institution also they have to leave. So, better prepare others and you know institutionalize things for that. As Swamiji said, when he said that, you know, con confided uh, that, you know, he will be leaving his body and he said that if a great tree is there, then under its shadows, uh, other smaller trees can't grow, can't develop. So, many times founder leaders become very attached to their creations. So, I think ins institutionalization of sustainability, of succession, continuity, this calls for a great detachment. I think we don't need to look beyond the Ramakrishna modern mission I mean, in this regard. Yeah. Uh, we'll take last two questions. I don't have a question, but uh, I thought, you know, as a senior person, I really like that you had a dream, you followed it, and you realized it. Yeah, that is you. to be applauded. Yeah, thank and the you. way you answered all the uh, young men's questions, you know, yeah. as though it was a very simple journey, you know, made me remember a couple of lines of Robert Frost, which I'll read out. Right. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a nice journey, nice starting point, and, and a wonderful journey you are actually I have taken up. I just wanted to know uh, what is this learning that they, the children do there? Uh, what do they te what do they yeah. the daily events? No, it's and uh, it's an overall educational, overall development institution. So, uh, children right from the a very young age, from the age of say four or five, and towards till higher education, college graduation, it could be post graduation. So, end to end, basically, right from when they are very young to the highest possibilities. Possibilities may differ between, say, one child and another, but the whole emphasis is on the higher possibilities be being manifested. So, it's like our earlier set of children are now well past, I mean, the colleges, they are in, they are getting into good jobs. Some are also, you know, have uh, interned with us and joined us, joined Parivar itself in some capacities. So, it's like this and we have our own in-campus school which is affiliated to the West Bengal board, reg regular formal school and after that, uh, you know, I mean, depending on the streams they take, our boys have been in computer science engineering through say, clearing the state say joint entrance exam for engineering or in say nursing or commerce accountancy, interning under some chartered accountants, all these things, getting workplace experience so, uh, or in different kind of streams. So, it's an end-to-end -end education and overall development. 
thing how do, how do you uh, uh, pick the children uh, yeah. where from where we I mean? get uh, thousands of cases each year we have our own field network across around 15 different districts around 10 11 in west bengal two in jharkhand and some other areas in bihar now and lots of other cases come to us through say on their own also also through certain field groups some other and smaller ngos through these references then we have a site inquiry procedure which assesses the neediness level criticality of need to be admitted into a long term residential program a free long term residential program our institutions are west bengal's largest free residential institution right now so uh, it's like and also takes into consideration since there is lot of pre admission engagement with say whosoever the relative many times no parents are there so other relative it could be a old grandmother who's in the last leg of her life or sometimes a small ngo which is referring so in this engagement that ensuring that there will be a it's not a not taken to be a stop gap arrangement that the child will drop out say after a couple of years or something or if a girl is there than the age of at the age of 13 14 she will plucked out to be married so it is made clear and you know it's it needs a continuous en- engagement obviously uh, that everyone the referring people guardians relatives of the child in fact the entire villages from where they come they are in sync with what how and what journey the child is going through at parivar and there is a uh, i'll just uh, you know i mean give an example give a statistic there has been less than 2% of discontinuity drop out out of the 1000 children less than 15 16 uh, have say who were at any point of time admitted into parivar have you know dropped out so there is a tremendous you know 98 more than 98% continuity into say higher education that kind in all our grade 10 batches high school which is the common i mean state board examination all batches have had a 100% pass result which is like a, i mean comparing it to say the say government say ashram shalas in those tribal areas or these kind they, they will have around 20 25% pass result and that is with a huge drop out before that also like out of everyone who was enrolled for class 1 in a say government institution in a tribal area only maybe 25% managed to reach class 10 and out of those who appear again 25% managed to pass so taking these together it's a 6-7% actually of the entire set who were enrolled who started the school only 6-7% actually pass whereas in our case there is no drop out and all 100% managed to clear class 10 class 12 in fact getting into higher education so yeah it's 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 like this yeah l- lots of questions are there but i think yeah. i will stop here yeah but for for the domain for this you were asking domain questions so for that our website is also there you can see our website i have a, uh, around 10 booklets here so maybe some of you can take them students may possibly share among themselves and others can take one copy each so uh, i think you have around a dozen copies so i request bharatwaj to you know mean later on distribute them so reading this also you will get an idea and you have our website etc which have a lot of information resources thank you yeah thank you okay and thank you it was a great pleasure and privilege and honor to be before all of you and i you know thank all of you the students the faculty who had come here and most of all the our very revered you know swami ji's of our beloved order who i mean in my own life i i would have been nothing without say the influence of the ram krishna movement so i i can't you know over emphasize the the influence of the ram krishna movement on me so i thank all of you thank you now i request professor shivakumar dean of students to re- to present a memento to sri vinay lohanee ji